Hey everybody, thanks for joining me with Border City Rock Talk where you get great interviews with great interviewees and sometimes a comedic touch. I got one of Canada's legendary singers, but before I do, I've got something to say. Give me an S. Yes. Give me a U. U. Give me a B. B. Give me an S. S. Give me a C. A C. You forget how to spell? What do you got? R. Subscribe, motherfuckers. All right. Do as Brian says and subscribe to my channel. Anyways, you got that corny bullshit <laughs> out of the way. How Is it you okay? Can you, can you swear on your show? Um, oh, yeah. All the time. Actually, um, well, I, I shouldn't be swearing that. anyway. I was brought up a good Catholic boy. I don't know. I veered off the road uh, somewhere along the line. Hey, it's all good. It's all good, my friend. So it looks like you got a bit of a tan going on there. You got a hell of a tan. I've been having a good time here in Florida. Holy Sunshine God. State, another day in paradise. Oh, yeah. You spend about half the year up there, right? I do. I love Florida. I love America. <clears throat> where do you... America, uh, as they say down here. Where where roughly are you in uh, in Florida? Uh, North Fort Myers. Oh, okay. Right on. It's one of the fastest growing places that's in the United States, too. We bought uh, property down here about three years ago, and we just love it. We've made lots of friends. and uh, Yeah. Um, yeah, I love coming down here. Every day, you know, you get up in the morning, the sun's shining, the birds are chirping. It's like, it's like a Walt Disney movie. Well, everybody's probably flocking there because uh, they heard Brian Vollmer of Helix was living down there. Maybe Tom no, Mathers so. is spreading the word. <laughs> so speaking, there's of a lot of musicians live down here, though. Ricky Medlock. Oh yeah, Gary um, Shia, Alcatraz yeah. is down there, and uh, Stat Howland used to live down here. My friend Johnny Hyatt. Um, and who else? Bob Seeger's uh, just down Naples, I believe. Uh, nice. Even Carmen. Singer and, uh, for bad companies down here. Well, it, yeah, I mean, like we, we, you, you and I come from a country that's got like 30 million people, which they have just in California. So Florida's probably got 10 or 12. So yeah, you're gonna have a lot of people down there. In the, I mean, the weather doesn't hurt. Yep, the weather's great, and I like going fishing too. Oh yeah, what do you fish for? Uh, well, we were out, uh, we caught uh, sheep's head and uh, uh, red snapper the other week I was out. Um, but uh, I like to catch a shark. I haven't caught one yet, but uh, that's what I'd like to catch. But there's flounder out there. There's all sorts of big fish. Yeah, I love red snapper. I think the first time I had it was in Mexico, but <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I got to tell you, honestly, I was talking to my friend here earlier. Um, my favorite song by Helix, um, well, there's a ton of them, but Deep Cuts the Knife. Uh huh. Uh, that was written by, uh, by Paul Hackman and uh, uh, yeah. Bob the Halligan late, down in New York City. The late Paul Hackman, yeah. And the funny thing was, we brought the song back up, they had demoed it, and we were at our practice hall in Bradup Street down in Kitchener, and uh, Alda Nova was down there trying to get us to do this song they had written called Heart of Stone. Yeah. And uh, he says, you know, that that uh, Deep Cut to Knife song, it's it's okay, but you should put my song in the album. And so me and uh, Sipe, my manager at the time, went out to uh, one of the vehicles outside. He's going, what do you think? And I went, I like Deep Cut to Knife personally. And that's what we stuck with. And it became uh, one of the biggest hits of the band's career, if not the biggest, at least radio hit anyway. No, I love it. So speaking of that, so what's your favorite song that I sing? That you sing? Yeah. I don't know. What songs do you sing? Yeah, yeah, that was one of my better ones. <laughs> I don't sing. Like, I couldn't carry a tune if it weighed a... Uh, what the hell are you talking about? Paperweight. That? I told you before we started talking, it's going to be a little bit of a corny interview. You'll remember me. That was fucked up. It was. And you know what? Um, you're trying to... You are telling me earlier, you're trying to get an interview with Randy Bachman, and I think I might be able to help you with that. Should Randy Bachman let me interview him? Yes or no? I don't know. That's up to Randy Bachman. It's not going to step in that. Okay. Well, if I get that interview, I'll remember that. I guess. Sure, yeah. Okay. So, your last uh, studio album was Old School. Um, yes. Are you doing anything with uh, Paris Records uh, currently? Are you still writing or...? We're still writing, um, but uh, I talk to Tom all the time, Tom Mathers that owns the, uh, yeah. the label. You know, I really love Tom because Tom loves the music and he involves himself personally in getting out there. The thing that really sold me on Tom Mathers was 
we played uh, the South Texas Music Festival. This is um, back about 2007, I think, somewhere around there. And uh, we're on stage and I can see Tom holding up signs at the back of the crowd. A uh, band will be out to sign autographs after the show. And I just, you know, you just don't get record company guys doing that. And uh, it shows his dedication to uh, the craft, if I may call it that. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it's a real art to learn how to survive in this business and to sell uh, records and to uh, survive. So you're saying he's a better promoter than, say, Artie Pufkin from Spinal Tap? <laughs> yeah, he's better than Artie. <laughs> Kick my ass. Kick my ass. That was a great movie. And, and you had a couple of Spinal Tap moments I read about recently. Um, the one I've had many Spinal Tap moments. Did that. Tell us about the tumble where you tumbled actually right through. Well, there's been a couple times I did that. Once out in Fredericton, New Brunswick at the Hilltop Pub. But uh, I think you're referring to Alice. the Motorhead tour. Was it Motorhead? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Let me. Was I jumped off one of the cabinets and the the stage was made with press board. <laughs> and so when I hit the stage, it went right through, and it took all the skin off my armpits as I went through. But I held on to my microphone. You know, true singer. Yeah. I come up out of the hole, and there's Lemmy, and he's leaning on the. Uh, PA and he's just shaking his head like you're fucked. <laughs> and uh, he had a lot of good times on that tour. I love Motorhead. It's my favorite metal band of all time. Yeah. Because yeah. Lenny was, Lemmy was unique. What you saw was what you got. And he was a nice person too. He always treated me very well. That's, that's awesome. Um, but getting got... back to Spinal Tap, if you want to go to that tour, I went to a place that. called the Pink Palace. In yeah. uh, I think it was Nuremberg, and uh, it was four floors, and the dressing room for the band was at the very back of the yes. venue. Yes, and you had to go down the the elevator, and then you had to go through the bomb. But it was it was an old Nazi tank factory, so in the basement there was small rooms, and then there was large rooms where they made tanks, and the smaller rooms I think probably were for, for munitions. Anyway, we got lost, and we could hear. Uh, you hear the crowd up banging on the floor, bang, you know, uh, uh, and um, we met this janitor down there. <laughs> of course, he didn't know any English, but uh, we somehow found our way up to the uh, stage. Was it the but same? Was it so the, many things in Spinal Tap actually did happen to us. Well, maybe they they, they, they borrowed it from you guys. Just like uh, I interviewed uh, Mike Levine not too long ago and uh, asked him, do you think uh, Harry Shearer uh, stole your stash? He goes, of course he did. Derek's balls in this dash. But yeah, no, it's been, uh, um, I was going to ask you, actually, do you have any uh, shows that are you're planning? Like, obviously, uh, extended tours are exhausting these days. You got a wife and everything. So, um, but are you doing well, it? Well, it's not so much that. I play as much as I, I could possibly play. But uh, there's so much money involved with big festivals now, for instance. If uh, you went to, say, do Sweden Rock, Mm -hmm. and you were going to stay for any length of time, it means you have to find something to do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, until the next weekend when maybe there's another festival that's going to hire you. Yeah. So it's very difficult to stay out there. When we toured uh, Europe in uh, 2014, uh, I had said to the promoter right up front, uh, or the agent rather, um, first off, we needed transportation, and secondly, uh, we wanted to play as many nights as possible. So we had, I didn't have to pay for hotel rooms. As yeah. soon as you get into hotel rooms and these tours, you're talking like, you know, close to a thousand bucks a night. Yeah. You know, so um, that cuts into things. You have to make money because probably, without money, you can't put out music. And probably the proximity to the venue too. So you're going to be, I mean, the fans are going to be getting the hotel rooms closest and then. I mean, you obviously will get a choice, but you might have to travel further just because of the the number of people booking rooms. That wasn't really a problem. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> when you said that, though, it made me think of the first Swedish tour when we, we had these uh, girls falls around the country. Well, and they'd, all, they'd all be in the lobby of the hotel before we go to the venue. Oh, yeah. They used to put, put all this different colored hairspray in their hair and uh, it falls around and I mean, you take the That's good with the bad when you're a musician, like Brian. Huh? 
you take the good with the bad when you're a musician. Girls following you around. I that mean, was like, that was kind of good. But I know that's what I'm saying. Beautiful <laughs> Swedish girls follow us around. Yeah, it's a that doesn't one. happen nowadays. I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Um, so I understand that you you really love being a landlord. You were, we were talking yesterday. You're having a blast with that. What's going on? Well, I don't know if I have a blast being a landlord, but it's <laughs> it, it's helped to supplement my meager income as a musician. Uh, one of the things I always tell my today. students. Excuse me. Sorry, I keep interrupting. So Eric Martin will tell you, yeah, if you let Ernest interview you, he won't shut up. No, you were telling me yesterday you were sending some emails out to, to city councilors or whatever. Well, they're trying to get rid of Airbnb in uh, London, Ontario, where I have a, 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 an Airbnb. Uh, so it just makes my life more difficult. It doesn't end it or nothing. But, you know, uh, politicians are always looking for a way to uh, not let you make money. Mm -hmm. But um, I like being a landlord to give me an alternate uh, source of income. Yeah, residual. And, uh, yeah. The, big, the big guy is called diversifying. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same thing. I had money in uh, uh, real estate. And it, uh, when things went sour with the music business, I always had something to go to. Plus, I always bought my neighborhood. I wanted to improve my neighborhood. And I figured that if I bought a house and uh, I made it look nice uh, in my own little way, yeah. Uh, I was doing what I said I was going to do. Uh, I'm a good landlord and I had nice property. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew that I could put my own blood, sweat and tears into it and uh, develop equity. Yeah. So that was my plan there. And it worked out quite good. I just sold one of the houses. I got two left, the one I live in and uh, my Airbnb. So we'll see if City Hall destroys that uh, source of income. Yeah. I thought for, for I remember is it Planet Helix was is it that house that was on M, uh, Much Music on the Cribs? Um, you still own that MTV, house? MTV, not Much Music. Oh, it was MTV? Yeah, I, but Much I, Music came to the house at one point too. We yeah. had a lot of people come, newspapers, magazines. Uh, Danko Jones interviewed me there once. Yeah. Came all the way down, and uh, I, I remember the house. But do you still own it? No, I sold that you, house. You, you did sell it. That's that would yeah. have been a great Airbnb. But I live like fifteen feet away. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, my back my back door now opens up, and I look at Planet Helix every day when I get up, and I'm back in London. Only I don't have to uh, mow the lawn, cut the hedges, uh, paint the walls. Da 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 da. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh, better for me. That's awesome. Well, I know you have dinner plans with your brother in Florida, so I will let you go. Before that, without naming any names, do you have any good, interesting, funny stories of playing Sault Ste. Marie? We talked about Sault Ste. Marie. Ago. Well, um, we played a place there. I won't I name the name. It's right beside the East Gate. Oh, okay. Right. right. What would that club be? Uh, beside the East Gate? Yeah. Uh, the Algonquin? Yeah, I think that was the place. Okay. And uh, everybody got bit by bed bugs sleeping <laughs> there. But uh, there was some lady that owned the place. She came to me like at the very last minute. She says, I'm not paying the HST. Right? Oh, no. Right? So she may, she didn't, you know. Yeah. And then it was just one thing after another. But the place was so friggin' packed. Yeah. And I, but uh, we had a, we have a fan there named Jackie Vandercliff and um, yeah. kept getting letters from Jackie for years and uh, they'd be like, they didn't make any sense. And uh, after a while, we get so many of them, we just like, throw them away. And one day I get a phone call from a nurse and she said, I'm uh, Jackie Vandercliff's care, caretaker. She fell down a flight of steps when she was a little girl. Oh. And she's never really developed since then. But she's oh. a big Helix fan. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Well, Jackie, where they, she worked at a printing plant. Okay. Uh, like they print stuff. And her job was to put the uh, printed material in boxes. And uh, so I started writing back to her anyway. And so she'd come out of work. And there was a phone booth there at that time. And she'd phone back to the home where she lived every day to yeah. find out if I'd written her a letter yeah and so i set her up an eight by ten nice. and a bunch of stuff and eventually we ended i ended up going to sault ste marie to say you know to meet her wow so i go all the way up there and uh she had this she had this picture get this 
It was an eight by 10 of the band. And it was uh, one off the back of another taste album. And from rubbing it, rubbing uh, the faces on it, it was all, all our heads were just white spots. So they had <laughs> taped it up at the home with scotch tape. So she couldn't rub any more of it off. Oh my God. And um, she came all the way down to London, Ontario to visit Linda and I. She brought a, a care taker, had to bring her all the way down and drive her down and stuff. Oh. And we went out to Woodstock where the band was playing. Yeah. And she was a heavy diabetic. And this guy watching her, he let her drink like three beers, which like should have yeah. never happened because she, right. she was sick, 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 right? Yeah. So the next day, um, she was in bed for most of the day. She wasn't feeling well. And uh, Linda finally made supper, and Linda made uh, uh, spaghetti bolognese. So we said, are you hungry? She goes, oh, yeah, I'm hungry, right? She gets to the table. She took one. She sits down. She looks at her plate. She goes, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> right back in the bedroom. But uh, that was her little visit. And then she went all the way back home to Sault Ste. Um, Marie. Well, that's nice what you did for her to lift her spirits for sure, right? Well, she was a great, she's a great Helix fan. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for your time, man. If I do get that Randy Bachman interview, I mean, I'll help you out. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Okay. But, um, yeah, enjoy your time in Florida, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, hear some more Helix uh, in the next year or so. Okay. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Okay, it's easy Thank for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Have a nice day. You too. Bye.